Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something that I have been putting off for three months, four months, uh, ever since February. The last book haul that I did was January and it was huge and it made me feel bad. So then I just wasn't doing them and then it made the problem worse by all the books stacking up and now I have three, four months worth of books that I gotta show you guys. <laughs> now, if you have yeah, this is, this is a stacks. And I did do it by, oh, I, it's four months because I did it by months. That's, that's so smart of me. <laughs> if you have watched every single video I've put out, which is unlikely, uh, but if you have, then you've seen pretty much every book that is in here because they have been featured normally in vlogs when I get them or their book boxes or just random things. So there are definitely some in here that have not been shown before, but most of them you've probably seen if you've watched every single video that I've done. But anyway, we're we just gotta get into it because there are so many books. And there's some that aren't even pictured here. Like March was really bad, guys. March was like really, really bad. So there there's some that's the March pile. There's some that there's there's some that are missing because I already got rid of them. So it's going great. So before we start, I first wanted to say thank you to two people who are so amazing. So as uh, some people already know, I have hit 1k subscribers, which is like amazing. Never thought that would happen in a million years. I am still shocked. So I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who subscribed and watches my videos. I can't, like, I literally can't believe it. It's so shocking. So Two things, two things. First of all, having to do with the 1K, my best friend ever, Marissa, sent me a gift in the mail that I thought was so funny. <laughs> and she's so nice, but she sent me this. <laughs> I was cracking up when I saw this. I was like, yep, she would send me this. I love it, I love it. It was so funny because when we got in the mail, she couldn't add like a little like thing to it saying it was her. So my husband opens it and he's like, did YouTube send this to you? And I was like, through Amazon? <laughs> no. So I had to contact Marissa and be like, you sent me this, right? Like I, this has gotta be you. And she's like, yeah, of course it was me. And I'm like, see Lucas, it is not YouTube sending me things. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. And then, uh, one of my lovely subscribers, Portraits of Me, sent me a book that I've been searching for desperately and they actually sent the book to me and I... I can't believe it. It's another thing that I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> but I have been desperately searching. If you guys watched my Fairy Loot book box catch-up episode one, you guys knew that I was looking for the second book of Defy the Night and she sent it to me. So first of all, sent it in a book sleeve, which was amazing, and then sent me the matching fairy loot copy, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I was, fla again, flabbergasted about, the, like, the kindness of the book community. I can't believe it. So I'm so excited. It's stunning, and it matches, because it's, fairy loot for some reason decided to do, like, the B copy size, which nothing matches except for what they do, and it was going to drive me nuts. So I cannot believe that she sent me a copy, and again, thank you, thank you so much for sending that to me. Okay, so now we are moving on to the actual book haul, which technically that was part of the haul, but we are moving on to the book haul, and we are going to be starting with February's pile. So before we get to the physical books that I can hold up, I do have a couple uh, in the haul that I cannot hold up because either they were Kindle, audiobook, or I've gotten rid of them already. So Wild Blood I actually got in February. I already read it, unhauled it, didn't like it, was really sad about it. I also got Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson, which I'm so excited to read. I still haven't read it because I started it and then I realized that I didn't remember anything from Sorcery of Thorns. So it's like a little novella that follows Sorcery of Thorns, if you didn't know. So I got to read Sorcery of Thorns over again before I read Mysteries of Thorn Manor because I was not enjoying it because I could not remember a single thing that happened in it because I read that years ago. I also bought the audiobook of Sea of Tranquility because I was trying to read that for a book club pick. Sid Bookworm was doing a buddy read for it and I was struggling reading it physically. So I switched to the audiobook and I was just like, fine, whatever. I had tons of audible credits because I don't listen to that many audiobooks. So I used one of my credits on Sea of Tranquility and listened to it. And I did prefer listening to it compared to reading it. So I was really glad that I bought that. So got Sea of Tranquility as well. So that was everything that I had non-physically. So let's start with the actual physical pile. It's it's not that bad. Really March 
which was really bad. The rest of the ones, this is just chunky books. This really wasn't that bad. And a uh, spoiler warning, there are going to be some book box spoiler, special edition spoilers in here. Nothing from uh, May. Yeah, I kept everything out for May. I didn't want to spoil anything for May. So everything else is for fair game though. <laughs> Everything else is fair game. So anyway, first book that I actually these are in no order, so I'm just gonna be going through them. But starting for February, we have Heart of the Sun Warrior. I am so glad I got this as a fairy loot special edition because I just finished Daughter of the Moon Goddess. That was in my fairy loot uh, catch up vlog, and I absolutely loved it. So I am so excited that I have the gorgeous fairy loot edition, and it's just stunning. I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. You have the gorgeous artwork inside of it and I am so excited to start this one because I did finish the first one so I really would like to start this one relatively soon. Next I actually saw this at the bookstore and I was really excited because it is the Curse Breakers, Curse Workers, I always kept calling it the Curse Breakers, uh, the Curse Workers the whole trilogy in one book and I just love how how chunky it is. <laughs> and it's by Holly Black. This is like an older Holly Black work and I didn't like the original like cover so I never thought about getting them and then I saw that they put them all into one copy I mean look at the look at the floppiness of this book <laughs> I love it so I'm really excited to start this one I don't really know anything what this one is about I just know it's by Holly Black and it's three books in one and it's really pretty so that's that's why I got that one <laughs> And of course, next I got Chain of Thorns. I'm not even close to reading this book, but I had for because I got the first one in this edition and it has the collector's first edition on my other two, I had to make sure I got a copy that had the collector's first edition on it. So that's pretty much the only reason. I don't know anything about, like I'm not even started this part of the series yet. I'm still on, the only series that I finished is the Mortal Instruments. I'm still on the Infernal Devices. I'm on the third book of that one. So I'm not even close to getting to this one. Becca in the books was doing a read along. Her book club was doing Blood Mercy and I <laughs> so I got a copy of this because I was like oh it's really pretty really chunky book. Yeah I made it to 180 pages and I'm stuck there. I've been stuck there for three months. <laughs> So it's not going well, but it's not like vampires and the vampire, it's, it's a, what are they called? Romanticy, I think, romance fantasies and has to do with the Hesperines, which are these like cinnamon roll vampires and uh, a relationship between a human girl who is the daughter of a really ruthless king. So that's kind of what it is. It's just very po politics heavy and nothing has much like happened and the writing is pretty dense so if you want a slow burn very very slow burn <laughs> romance then you should probably check this out but for me I'm undecided if I'm DNFing it yet. Then following my buying of sequels and still having have read them I bought the sequel to Heart of Iron I think is what it, yeah Heart of Iron Soul of Stars by Ashley Poston. I really liked the first one it was a really cool sci-fi book so I really need to get to this one but I'm just so bad at finishing series like I'll read the first book and then I get like hype for the rest of the series and then I buy the next books in the series and then nothing happens so maybe I'll throw this one and Heart of the Sun Warrior into a vlog together to finish series because they're duologies. It's not even like I have to read a bunch of books to finish a series. They're just duologies. Next we have a gorgeous, I think this is a fairy loot edition, and it is Spice Road. I love this copy. It's not normally something I would pick up because it seems like it's very travel heavy and I tend not to love books that like revolve around travel but at the same time I've heard some pretty great things about this so I'm excited to get to it I just it's it's definitely probably going to be in one of my fairy loot catch-up vlogs because it's not something that I'm immediately like drawn to because of that travel storyline thing happening and then I bought the book that may be one of the biggest disappointments this year so far and that's Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry I just really haven't enjoyed it that much I'm really sad about it I know everyone loves it but I just and I love cozy books. I love cozy, like I read Emily Wilde's and I gave that a five star. So I don't know why this one just like didn't hit for me, but I think it's because like I was promised this like awesome sapphic relationship and I feel like it really wasn't that good. I was kind of disappointed in it. So that was, yeah, I wish there was more of that. It was, I think what I said in the vlog, cause I read this in a Patreon book club vlog, I wanted either more of the relationship or just get rid of it because it wasn't enough. 
And then probably one of my biggest surprises of the year, I got Alone With You in the Ether. This was, I, I got, I think this is the Waterstones edition, but I got it off of Mercari, which is so much cheaper apparently than buying it from Waterstones because Waterstones is insanely expensive. I also have some tabs. I was like, what is that on the side of the book? But it's a little bit of tabs. I think I had some quotes that I really liked but it's a really pretty edition. This is a five star read for me this year. Probably one of my favorite books I've read this year. Huge surprise because it is completely out of my comfort zone. I could not believe how much I love this. I read this for one of Katie Coulson's Patreon book clubs and I'm so glad she picked it because I never, never would have read this otherwise. Next I got the Illumicrate, I think this is a December book but it came late. God killer. This to me is the prettier edition. I really like this. I know a lot of people liked the Waterstones edition, but I like this one significantly better actually. But it's just like so pretty. It's like a nighttime version of it with the gorgeous sprayed edges. Yeah, it's like this like really pretty nighttime edition. Next was an impulse buy <laughs> because I'd been seeing this. I feel like I saw this on BookTok. I'm really not on BookTok that much, but I sometimes when I'm on TikTok, it like bleeds over into BookTok. So I saw this and then I feel like I've seen this on BookTube a few times, but I got a broken blade and that cover is just so pretty. I could not help myself. So I ended up picking this up from Barnes and Noble one day when I was just like messing around. I think I'd gone to get something specifically for like like a reading vlog and then I saw this and I ended up getting this as well so the next one I picked up was also an impulse buy and it's because it just like I've never read from this author and I got mad honey I've literally never read a Jody Jody Pickle book so I was like okay let me try this this one seems out of all of her books the one I would probably like the most because it has to do with like court cases and stuff so I thought it'd be really interesting to try something way outside my comfort zone but of course I haven't read it yet <laughs> so just is anyone surprised? Is really? Like anyone? Because I'm not. And then we have my two book of the month picks from that month, which are Georgie All Along and The Writer's Retreat, Writing Retreat, which I haven't read either one of them. <laughs> nope. I haven't read either one of them. Um, I don't, there's really nothing other to say. I just started hearing like not great things about this one, which like drove my hype down of that one. And then this one's like contemporary romance, which makes me nervous because I don't know. So I haven't read either one. And then I picked this one up specifically because I really like this author, the same author as None Shall Sleep. It is The Killing Code. I actually really want to read this one. I don't know why I haven't read it yet, but it has to do with like World War II. Yeah, Virginia 1943 and it's following... Oh, Cro Codebreaker. Codebreaker. So our main character is a codebreaker. So I think it sounds really, really cool. I just... I don't know why I haven't gotten to this one yet. Okay, that was everything from February. I told you guys it wasn't that bad. The problem child is March. We're going into March. After March, it's easy. It's smooth sailing after March. But March is brutal and I have a lot like that's not back there. So let's go over what I don't physically have right now. So pretty much all of my book of the months I got rid of already from that month. So I'm just gonna list them off. I have them written right here. I have some questions for you. The London Seance Society, Wayward, the Soulmate, and Lone Women. I don't have any of those up here because I have gotten rid of them all already. I didn't like any of them, which is what well, Wayward was okay, but it's just, it was not my cup of tea. I didn't feel like I needed to keep it. So that's five right there <laughs> from March that I did not keep. I also picked up Liar, Dreamer, Thief because it was a pick from Aardvark and it sounded really good, but then they sold out and then they were having a sale on Kindle. So I was like, oh, let me just pick it up because I think it was $1.99. So I haven't read it yet, but it's sitting on my Kindle waiting and it sounds really interesting, but also like way out of my comfort zone. Uh, Carrie Soto is back. It, <laughs> I got it from, I got it from the store. I have a physical copy, but it is all the way on top of my bookshelf and I physically cannot get it down right now. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I have the physical copy literally in this room. I just, I can't, there's no way for me to get it right now because I had stacked all these up here and then went back and was like, oh, I missed that one. And then I looked up there and I was like, nope, <laughs> not getting it. So Carrie Soda's back. Have read that. Absolutely loved it. Highly recommend it to anybody who liked Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It was a very good follow-up book. Like, didn't have anything to do with it, but it was really fun. Okay, so those are all the ones that I don't have physically with me. So let's move to the physical stack. 
Okay, first up we have a book that I've actually been wanting for a really long time. Still haven't read it, but I was really excited to get it. I Killed Zoe Spanos. This was everywhere for a while. I really wanted a copy because they had the blue spray edges. So I thought that was really cool. And all I know is this is like a young adult thriller mystery kind of thing happening. And apparently I really need to do a young adult thriller <laughs> vlog just to get some of these out of the way. Then I picked up A House of Good Bones, which we literally just read for our book club. This is coming out, I think this haul is going to be coming out before that yeah because i think it's coming out sunday and how's it good bones is coming out sunday and this haul is going to be coming out saturday morning just because that's how the schedule kind of worked out not i don't like doing that like back-to-back -back videos but it's kind of just how it's working out so how's it good bones just finished this one very interesting <laughs> very interesting read then i picked up this is probably the first book i think i read this month or not this month but in march was vera wong's unsolicited advice for murderers my mom and i got this read a buddy read this was really fun if you want a cute cozy uh adult mystery i would recommend this just because it's, it's cute i think i gave it like a 3.75 or something it's adorable so <laughs> the copy i'm gonna hold up is not the copy that I got this month, but it is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. This is the copy that I read. I got the Lit Joy Edition this month, but I could not tell you for the life of me where that copy is. I looked for it everywhere. I have no idea where it is, but just picture the US cover and that's what it looks like. <laughs> So I got Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I already read this. Really, really like this book. Highly recommend this for people who want to read something a little bit weird and mysterious. And I picked up a book that I've been hearing about for a while now. I picked up The Hating Game and I read it pretty much immediately after I bought it. Really, really liked it. I thought it was really fun. I liked watching the movie and then reading the book. It was a fun experience. It's just a cute rom-com enemies to lovers workplace romance. Then one of the special editions, I think this is an Owl Crate, Midnight Strikes don't know anything about it. I think it has somewhat to do with like time etc. I don't know exactly what. I want to say this is like the Groundhog Day kind of thing-esque where they keep like repeating something but I don't I don't know for sure but all I know is it's really pretty. This is a naked hardback. I love that. It's very rare for them just to do naked hardbacks. Don't do any type of dust jacket and I think they did such a good job with this. It's so pretty. And next I picked up Immortality a Love Story. I actually finished this duology. I could not believe it. <laughs> this is definitely a duology I would have put off forever and ever, but for some reason I was just like, let's do it. Let's go. And so I finished it and I finished the duology and it's, I felt about the second one pretty much the same as the first one. If you're interested in this, it has to do with following a female uh, wannabe surgeon in a time period in London where that's not acceptable at all. There's body snatchers, stuff like that. It's just fun. It's a really fun book. There's a little bit of a fantasy aspect to it that I wasn't expecting that kind of surprised me, but I was more prepared for the second book uh, after not being prepared during the first one. This was another impulse buy because I really, really like this author and it is Stars and Smoke and it just sounds really cool. It's like, it's like a bodyguard story and it has to do with like pop stars and cool stuff like that. So that's all I know about it. I just love the cover and I love this author and I thought bodyguards story could be really fun. Then I picked up I'm working my way through the Wayward Children series. So I got Beneath the Sugar Sky and it's following one of our characters from the first novella and uh, you can tell I already started it. <laughs> I just haven't gotten very far in it so I'm excited about that. I also picked up a graphic novel and a manga volume. So I picked up Solo Leveling because I just keep hearing stuff about it. I haven't read it yet. I think I'm gonna wait and actually read it with my husband. I think we would really enjoy reading this together and it just has to do with like going through a dungeon. I think it's like a level one dungeoner it gets trapped in like a really high level dungeon and has to survive and then i've been hearing about this one so much i picked up orange it just sounds really cute i know it has to do with like this girl who gets a note from like her future self who warns her that something bad might happen and to do to do this to avoid this happening so it sounds really cute this is like a collected volume and i think there's two collected volumes so i love how it says the complete collection one but it's like this isn't the complete collection in here there's a second volume <laughs> Another special edition, The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. This was a fairy loot edition. It's. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This was so pretty. This blew my expectations out of the water. Like, the map is so cool. And the map's different on the back, too. So, I, yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with this edition and I'm really excited to read it. Another special edition, which I am super excited about, is City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. This is the same author as the Not Only Bones series. I don't remember exactly, that's what it's called. I really like the first two books in that series, didn't like the third one, so I'm a little nervous about reading this one, but at the same time, morally great characters and we even have like a pterodactyl in this. Like, that's a pterodactyl. 
So I'm excited about that. I'm just whipping through the special editions really quick. Here's another special edition, Revel, Revel. And I know it has circus themes in it. I think that's that's all I know about this one, but I think it was an owl crate pick. It was a totally redesigned cover. I didn't love the original design and I'm, I'm not like a huge fan of this one either. So it's kind of iffy for me. And we have Seven Faceless Saints, which I'm really excited for the book. I didn't love the special edition done by Fairy Loot, but I'm really, really excited to read like what's in it. So I kind of was like, whatever. But it is really small. I think it's one of the B, B formatted ones, but it's it's just really tiny for some reason. I didn't realize how many of my special editions came in March. That definitely like added to the pile why it's so big. Cause I feel like I got a bunch of Lumicrate and a bunch of my fairy loots from like back previous months at the beginning of March and towards the end of March. So I just had a lot in there. I also got Hunter Land. This is an unplugged edition. It is so pretty this has this has like supernatural buffy vibes i think so i haven't read this one yet but i'm pretty excited because if it's like supernatural i'm gonna be very happy <laughs> then i picked up the immortality thief this is the goldsboro edition i don't get goldsboro because i normally i actually don't like their picks but i heard this one was pretty good and it's like horror sci-fi so seeing the galaxy on the side i was like yeah let's let's get the goldsboro edition and it wasn't too hard to find a copy so i was more than fine actually getting like a little more expensive of a copy to get something pretty and i think i'm really really gonna like this one so <sighs> and then i picked this one up on a dare because my husband made a joke and i can't take anything as a joke <laughs> so i jokingly picked this book up seven sent him a picture of it he didn't answer until after i left the store and he was like you didn't get it did you because you're a coward and I was like, I'm going back and getting it. So I got Wave Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I don't know if I'll ever read this. I just know I have it in my possession and it's an option. And that's that's half of my life is creating options for myself that I'm never going to pick up. Aren't I so amazing and special? <laughs> it's so bad. It's so, but this is like, look, look at it. Just look, it's so pretty. <laughs> I just, there's something about the flop. I don't know what it is. I feel like all book lovers understand this like floppiness that you're obsessed with. And this is definitely has the flop. I'm gonna have to stop stacking on that stuff on that pile. It almost fell over early, which was horrifying. Another two impulse buys. We have The Magician's Daughter, which was also an aardvark pick, but um, I knew it was on sale at Barnes and Noble. So I got it at Barnes and Noble. But I think this has to do with some sort of magician going missing and our main character has to figure it out and it's off the coast of Ireland. So I don't know, it sounds pretty cute. And I think it's like cozy fantasy. So we're gonna see about that. And then I picked up, I think this is kind of also another cozy fantasy, but I've been seeing this one a lot, or at least I did when I picked it up and now I'm not seeing anything about it again. So now I'm like, whoops. <laughs> this is this is the problem. I buy stuff that I see on Book Talk all the time and then I'm like, I have it now, I don't need to read it, but this is a winner's promise. And I know, I think this is, um, yeah, part of a series, The Mirror Visitor. And I wanna say this is like a translated works, but I don't know if that's 100%. Don't, don't take anything I say as fact, <laughs> okay? Some stuff is made up. I don't even know some of the stuff that's made up. So I, I don't know anything that this is about. I just know it's really pretty and it's also very floppy. If we were on to the last couple, we're gonna zoom through them because I'm already sick of March. <laughs> Uh, Sadie by Courtney Summers. I've really been wanting this one because Meg, Meg with books, I think that's her name on YouTube. I, I can't use my phone. I, I'm holding things so I can't look it up. I'll put her name down below if that was wrong. <laughs> but she talks about this book so much and how much she absolutely adores it. And it's got like a podcast-esque feel to it. And I've heard that if you liked The Night Swim by Megan Golden, which was a five star, one of my favorite thrillers I've ever read, you might like this. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I really hope I like it. Another young adult thriller. I do need to do a thriller vlog, don't I? I'm I'm gonna start stacking stuff on the on the February pile because we're getting too high in the March. Okay, then I picked up Royal Blood, which is another young adult thriller, but it seems fun. Like she's, I think she's American or she's somebody who's non-royal and she gets involved in like the royal family. She finds out she's related to them or something and she starts wreaking havoc. So sounds like something I would like. Okay, I was gonna stack on the February pile, but it is more precarious because of the chunky book right there. The curse workers is threatening to uh, throw the pile down. So I'm not gonna stack anything on there. <laughs> Next, I picked up the collection Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong. It is two separate books. I know I think you can get like the Waterstones edition isn't two separate books, but I really liked the two separate books thing. And this is following the first book in like the new series. I don't remember what it's called because I haven't started it yet because I'm waiting for 
the last book to come out in the duology so that I don't have to wait because Chloe Gong is really good at writing cliffhangers. That traumatized me. <laughs> so I'm not doing it. So I'm gonna wait. Okay, last two for March. We have two special editions, Red Scholar's Wake and Song, what is it? Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. I don't really know much about either one of these. I think one, they might be both a Lumicrate. I don't remember. I know this one's a Lumicrate. This is their sci-fi pick. It has like a ship that's like alive, I think. This one seems really weird, but I've heard some like interesting things about it. And then I've heard great things about this one. I, I want to say this is, I don't know. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> Illumicrate, it said it on the inside. So this is an Illumicrate edition and I love that. I think it's so cool. So I've heard some pretty great things about this one. I just, I've been reading a lot of chunky fantasies lately, so it's not like super high up on the list to read right now. Neither one of these. Danger. <laughs> Okay, that's everything in March. We are moving on to April. Okay, first we have Camp Zero. This is one of my book of the month picks. Yes, that was something falling, probably a book. I did not enjoy this one. This was a DNF for me. Apparently a lot of people didn't like this one. So not much of a surprise. So another one that was an impulse buy because everyone was saying how much they loved it. Got Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I was actually gonna read this, but then it got picked for our Lazy Book Club pick for I think July. Now I'm like, is it July? No, it's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. This is an August pick because June is one for my enemies by Livy Blake. July is the new Riley Sager. And then August is going to be Trust in the Emerald Sea. So if you want to read this with us, August. <laughs> August, we are reading this one. But this is following a girl who is on like an island and it's surrounded by water that's not actually water, which is really interesting. And I'm really excited to read this and I love the cover. The cover is so pretty. Again, more special edition books. A lot of my books are special edition books. I got the Fairy Loot adult book, The Foxglove King. I'm not super excited about this one. And I'm, I don't, this also drives me crazy that this is in center. <laughs> but whatever. I'm not going to be staring at that, but I, I'm not like super interested in this is a romance fantasy, I think. And I, I really don't read that much romance fantasy if it's like smut heavy. And I think this is on the smuttier side, but I don't know. I'm still going to read it. I'm still probably going to enjoy it. I just, I don't love super heavy smut compared to plot books. But I could have that totally wrong because I don't really know what that book is about. I'm just assuming based on what I've heard so far. And then I got Lies We Sing to the Sea. This was the Illumicrate pick. I know this is a lot of controversy around it. I'm not going to repeat it. I already talked about it in one of my earlier videos. If you want to know, go to Goodreads. Goodreads has a whole big thing about it. I have not read this yet. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting when I do get to it. And then we've got two copies of Silver in the Bone. We have the Fairy Loot Edition and then we have the Alcrate Edition. I personally think Alcrate knocked it out of the park. I love the Alcrate Edition. I think it's unique. I think it's cool. I think this is boring. I And I don't like the sprayed edges being basically just a copy of the front. I'm not a fan of that. They've done it. They did it two book boxes in a row didn't love that. So I hope they kind of get away. I know a lot of people really like it. So I guess I can't say I hope they get away from it. But for me, <laughs> I would rather them not do it. But I'm excited about this because Alexandra Bracken wrote Lore. And I know a lot of people did not like Lore, but I actually really liked it. And I like that this spine matches the spine of their lore edition, which I thought was really cool. I'm just a little confused why they didn't go the lore route because they completely changed the cover for lore. So I was kind of hoping this would match the lore copy, but the front's nothing like the, the one Fairy Lou did. I know this has to do with like King Arthur things, I think. It's finding artifacts, I think. And then quickly, my other book of the month. I would have done them all together, but uh, Camp Zero was on the top for some reason. But I got Advika and the Hollywood Wives, which I absolutely loved. Highly recommend to people who liked Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is more of like uh, making very difficult decisions and getting away from situations. I really, really liked this one. And I was surprised that not a lot of people did. So I hope more people find this book and enjoy it. I also got a Megan Miranda book. I actually really like Megan Miranda books. I know a lot of people who read thrillers think they're kind of generic, which they kind of are, but for me, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> but I heard this has some what to do or is similar to like Yellow Jackets. I might have that wrong, but it's that show on, is it FX or, or Showtime? I think it's Showtime. 
uh, where they're like stranded somewhere. So I am very curious about this one. This is probably going to be my next thriller that I pick up just because it's the most interesting to me. And then I picked up a Regency-esque romance and it is Anna Maria and the Fox. And this just looks so fun. <laughs> It's just, it's, yeah, it's just giving me great, like, really fun Regency vibes, and I cannot wait to read this. I love how when I do hauls, I, like, go through the books that I got, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I haven't read this. I can't believe I haven't read this. And then I'm like, yeah, I haven't read it because there's, like, a thousand other books that I say the same thing about, so that's why I haven't read them yet. And then I picked up Romantic Comedy, which I've seen some... Some people really, really are liking this, and then some people don't like where the book went. Like, they liked the beginning, but they didn't, like... The end of the book but I'm still okay with it. I know it has to do with like an SNL style thing where we're following one of the writers who makes a comment about how male writers end up with these model women and women writers who are just normal looking will never end up in really with really hot guys and that's kind of like the joke about this book is that she meets a really hot guy I think. Oh my god these books never end. <laughs> they never end. So I ended up picking up Spellbound which is my first F.T. Lukens. I've always wanted to read an F.T. Lukens because books just seem so cool and this one has to do with like a magical agency so and there's like a mystery so I thought this was a really good place to start for me. And I picked this one up because I didn't know it was going to be a book of the month choice because I, I would have rather gotten it from book of the month but ended up getting the last word by Taylor Adams and I am so excited to read this one. I've heard great things about this. I heard this definitely gives more uh, no Exit than it does Hairpin Bridge. I have not read Hairpin Bridge. I am actually planning a vlog where I'm going to read both of them and seeing which one I prefer because sometimes I can be a little bit controversial <laughs> about my book picks. So I'm very curious which one I'll like more. I do have Hairpin Bridge upstairs. And then I got our book club pick. I really liked the Barnes & Noble edition so I ended up picking up one for my enemy which I'm really glad about because then it made me not pick up the Fairy Loot edition because I was gonna buy the Fairy Loot edition and then I was like no. No, you already have a copy. You already have a really, really pretty copy. I know the blue is really, really pretty, but this is a really pretty copy too. And I feel like it, the red and the black works really good for like the morally gray atmosphere of this book. So I'm really, really excited. And I'm really curious how different it's going to be from uh, Alone With You in the Ether by Libby Blake because it's totally different types of books. So I'm very curious about what it's going to be about. And then I have a couple of paperbacks that I got. My husband actually picked out... The Grim Rose Girls. I was like, go pick me a book out. And he chose the Grim Rose Girls. He said, this is something that I definitely seem like I would like. So I'm pretty excited about this. And it has to do with these girls at an academy. So I'm excited about it. And I picked up The Haunting of Maddie Claire. I love Simone St. James. I did not like her most recent book. What was it? The Book of Cold Cases. So I know this is like her very first book and they re like put it out. So I'm really hoping I like this one, but it has to do with ghosts and potentially like paranormal investigators back in like World War One era. So I think that sounds really cool. And this was a book to buy. Everybody talks about this book, especially with the second one just coming out. And it's The Kind Worth Killing. And I have read one other Peter Swanson that I actually really liked. It was Every Value Break. I know nobody liked that one, <laughs> but I really liked it. I thought it was just a fun popcorn thriller so but I've heard this one is like the twist in this is really really good I don't know anything about the book and we're gonna keep it that way I don't want to know what happens nothing not even the plot of this one then the very last one I bought is written and read by Ann Bishop I bought one of Ann Bishop's other books it's the first book in like her newer series but the way that the writing started I was like I don't know what's happening and then it turned out it was part of this whole world that I didn't know anything about so I ended up getting the very first book in that like in her whole world series and it's totally different that's that's my one qualm is I really liked the one that like I already had and but like I felt like I didn't know enough so I went back to get the original one and it's it's this is more like urban fantasy which I'm not like a huge fan of and the newer one's kind of like just regular fantasy I guess it's still got an urban feel to it but it feels more like just traditional fantasy with uh monsters so we're gonna see I'm gonna have to get into this one but I'm, I'm determined because I want to read that other one <laughs> that was everything in April we are down to our last month and we're in that month we are in May there are two special editions I think that I've gotten in May that I will not be showing in this. I just got them too. It was the Fairy Loot adult book. I just got it. I don't feel comfortable showing it in this type of haul because it's so new and a lot of people don't have it yet. So I'm not going to be showing that one. And I think I got one other one. I don't remember what it was, but I think I have one other one that I'm not showing. But anyway, other than that, I really, I've been so good. I've been so good in May. 
Okay, so first in May, we're gonna talk about my book of the month fix because I, again, I get book of the months every month. So I feel like it's no surprise that I have at least a couple. First, I got The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I read a couple of Christina Lauren's, I think, and I've, they're all pretty fun. So I was like, why not give this one a shot? And then of course, I picked up Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Part of Your World is probably my favorite book from last year. So I've been foaming at the mouth to get my hands on a copy of this. And I am impossibly excited to read this one. I just I haven't been in a romance mood. So I haven't read any romance recently unless it's like in other books. So I really need to get in a romance mood so I can read this. And then I got Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? Besides yours truly, this is probably my most excited book for May, just because this sounds very uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I've said that name like six times in this video already, but it's one of my favorite books ever. I love how the story is told and I love anything that has to do with celebrities and especially like old time Hollywood. So this just sounds like a beautiful book and like the cover is so pretty. <laughs> like this screams just like glamour and Hollywood and stunning and I'm just so excited about it. I finally tried Aardvark this month. I, I don't know about it still. I love the feel of the books. I I love the box they come in. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I feel about the bookmarks. Like I feel like I've bent my bookmark a lot because they're kind of like odd. I'll show you when I have one in the, one of the books. But I don't know about the book picks. I'm a little on the fence about that. So first you have Chain Gang All Stars. I have to say it very slowly or I completely ruin the title. I ended up DNFing this already, unfortunately. I think it's for some people, but it was a bit too... <sighs> violent but mostly it was the writing i did not like the writing style so he's previously written like a novella i think that won an award and i feel like you can feel that i feel like it the, this book was like a ton of novellas like crammed together into one book and it for me the writing did not work i was confused i was having a really hard time keeping track of what characters were what so i think this book will be really great for some people but i just had a really hard time keeping track of it so it was, it was not for me but and it's very violent. <laughs> it's very, very violent. So if you don't like violence in books, I would not recommend this. Then I picked up, I have not read this one yet, but I picked up The Perfect Ones from Aardvark. And this is not doing great, um, but I'm excited because I'm not very difficult to please when it comes to thrillers, especially shorter thrillers. I tend to enjoy them. Even if I give a thriller a three, normally I had a good time. <laughs> so I, this is, yeah, this has really low ratings. I think this is the lowest rated book on my Goodreads right now. This is the bookmark. I love the idea behind it, but this part sticks out and it's like, you can see it's like bent and it's just, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the bookmarks. It, they're cute though. But yeah, so I'm excited to read this one and I know it's a thriller and it has to do with like someone uh, was murdered or goes missing in Iceland and has to do with social media stuff. So I like the premise of it. I'm gonna go into it with an open mind, but I know a lot of people are not liking it right now. I don't know when I got this book. I did not write it down. I keep a very detailed track of what I buy so that I can look at it and make myself feel guilty to stop buying books. In the Lives of Puppets. I did not write when I got this. So I either got it in May or I got it last month. So I, I don't know. I think it was like at the beginning of this month maybe, but I don't know. But In the Lives of Puppets, gorgeous. I mean, at first I was a little like, it's so different than the original cover that I was very taken aback when I first saw it. I was like, oh, I don't like it. And then I sat with it and I was like, oh my God, I love it more than the original. <laughs> um, I love the vibes. I love the sprayed edges and the back. I just, it's so pretty. So yeah, I ended up loving this copy and I'm very nervous to read this because it seems like a heartbreaker, but at the same time, it just sounds so good. And then the book that every single person has read lately is The Fourth Wing. I am very glad I got this because apparently they're sold out of this edition. Like no one can get a copy of it anymore. So that's very interesting. I wonder if they're going to do a reprint with the edges or they're just gonna be like, oh well, that's <laughs> that's it. I don't know, but everyone's loving this book. I'm actually going to be doing a vlog. If, you, if you're watching this whole video, you get all these spoilers about what videos I'm doing. Um, I will be doing a vlog just reading this uh, about is the booktube hype worth it? Because it is the most hype book I think I've ever seen, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so I'm very curious to see if it's actually like worth the hype. Okay, last couple books. This is a horror, The Lake House. I read this in my thriller horror vlog where I read three brand new thriller horror books. 
This was the winner of the vlog. I love this. They get trapped on this like island and they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on and it's it's creepy. It's creepy. If you like just simple like fun horror books, I definitely would recommend this one. Also in that vlog, I read Lying in the Deep. I <laughs> I have nothing good to say about this. I have nothing nice to say. So um, it takes place on a cruise ship and it's a lot about relationships and a girl goes missing. So that's all I have to say about it. I'm not gonna say anything else. <laughs> if you want my more concise thoughts on that, that is in that thriller or horror vlog. So the last book in that thriller horror vlog was This Delicious Death. This one is a bit of a disappointment because I really liked their other book, uh, My Dearest Darkest. This just didn't have the right vibes for me. It was still fun, but just not exactly what I thought this was about. But it has to do with girls who there's like a pandemic that happened, but it mutated some people. And so the people that were following had been mutated and they have to eat human remains or whatever, body parts. Or not remains, because I, I think they can't be dead. I don't remember. But I have to eat like human parts and they go to a concert and people start going missing. So it's fun. It's fun. It's not my favorite though. Then I picked this up because Riley Marie read this and said she hated it, but I uh, thought people who liked books that I love should read it. I don't remember which two books it was, but it's called Loot and it's more, it seems like a horror, but it's like a nature horror kind of thing. And I, I want to see the two books she said were like A House of Salt and Sorrow, which I loved and one other one I don't remember. But yeah, so I was like immediately sold on this <laughs> because I love that book. I love the books that she said. I, again, don't remember what they were, but I love them. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. It's like a reverse recommendation, which th that would be a funny video to do. Then I picked up Isle of the Gods by Amy Kaufman and I've only read the Illuminae series by this author. So I'm really excited. This sounds really cool and I really like the cover. Could not tell you what it's about. I remember reading the synopsis and thinking it sounded really great, but I couldn't tell you what it's about now. I know I said the last couple like a couple minutes, a couple books ago, but now we're at the last couple. <laughs> Picked up They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. I actually really like Jessica Goodman. She's not like a super popular thriller writer, but I think her young adult thriller books are really fun. So I saw this at Second on Charles or Second hand books or a lot of these books are secondhand or pango by the way <laughs> i would not be able to afford most of these new um but yeah i saw this for a pretty good price so i picked it up same with this one this is actually a book i've already read off to be the wizard this is one of my and my husband's favorite book series it's called magic 2.0 and they're so funny it's about this group of people who find out that the world is a computer program and they program themselves to go back to medieval times and they give themselves wizard powers and it's so funny. It's a little cheesy, but if you like video games and you like funny books, I would highly recommend this series. Uh, we didn't have a physical copy of it, so I was like, I found a physical copy for like $2 and it's in pristine condition, so of course I'm gonna get it. And then next, I got a book that has such low ratings on Goodreads as well, and it's In the Hall of the Knife, but I'm a sucker for anything Clue. Clue is my favorite board game. It is my favorite movie with Tim Curry. I absolutely love it, so I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read the series no matter how low rated it is. <laughs> Again, I think that was like $2 at Charles, Second and Charles. And then the winner of that trip to Second and Charles, I found a brand new copy for use. Like someone brought it in of If We Were Villains. It's basically brand new and I got it for $4. And I was like, you guys mislabeled that because a lot of people are after a used copy of this. Like, I'm so excited to read this, but I wasn't willing. I was on the fence about this because I know it's very similar style to um, the book that I hate, The Secret History. So I was a little nervous about that and I hated that book. So I wasn't willing to buy like a full price copy. So I'm glad I found this. And then the very, very last book, what literally came in the mail yesterday, Serpent and the Wings of Night. <laughs> Ah, got me. Booktube got me, okay? I've been watching way too many videos. Every single person is talking about this book. This, I guess this, this and Fourth Wing should be in the same video because of the amount of people talking about this. I don't like romantic fantasy. So <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen when I read this. This could go one of two ways. Either I'm gonna hate it or I'm gonna be like, yes. <laughs> so I don't know, because I do like Akatar. I'm obsessed with Akatar. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. This, this, is, this is a toss up. What's going to happen with this? And also, it's gorgeous. And it's one of those floppy books. I actually thought it was bigger. It's smaller than I thought it was. Okay, so those are all the books that I've gotten since February, minus like one or two, because obviously there's stuff floating around the house and there's some special editions I didn't show you, but these are all the books that I got. <laughs> it's bad, guys. It's, it's bad. It's bad. 
it's really bad but I haven't gotten anything from the bookstore in like weeks all the stuff I got in May was either special editions that coming in the mail serpent wing of night thing that came yesterday uh but everything else I got at the beginning of the month because I cannot control myself so I'm gonna try to control myself next month better but I don't have like super high hopes <laughs> but one thing that's keeping me from buying books is I have been using my library more I have tons of library books and I finally got onto NetGalley and I just got a ton of arcs like I got approved for a bunch of arcs including the second book of Emily Wilde's which I cannot believe that I got approved for I'm so excited to read that one so that is kind of like top of my list I'm going to be doing an arc video where I read some highly highly anticipated arcs and I'm going to try to keep them like that are coming out soon except I'm going to include Emily Wilde's because that's the one I'm most excited about even though it's not coming out until January. Anyway those are all the books that I got. So excited that you guys watched this video. If you have gotten to this point make sure to leave a book or a stack of books. I don't know emojis so anything book related <laughs> you can leave in the comments down below to let me know that you made it this far and I just want to say thank you so much again for a thousand subscribers. That is crazy. So make sure you subscribe to join this lovely community that we are building together which is so exciting and uh, make sure you join because I do put out polls. I love that people are really getting involved with the polls now. I think the last one had like 100 people voting in it which was amazing. I love that and you guys suck because the one option that I didn't want I just put out a poll of what vlog I'm gonna do next and you jerks picked the one that's going to take me forever to do which is clearing out all my book of the months read or get rid of so I'm like <laughs> you guys are jerks so thank you thanks for that <laughs> that's gonna be so difficult I'm gonna have to start that like today if I want to finish it in the next month <laughs> so anyway again thank you so much for thousand subscribers can't believe it and thank you for watching this video make sure you subscribe make sure you comment down below if you have any of these books if you've read any of them if I should put any of these to the top of my TBR because there's a lot I haven't read and make sure you like the video if you enjoyed the content and I'll see you guys in the next one